King Bolin K8 right here. We've got a wireless setup. This is super neat. It gives you a little reminder to take that out whenever you're done so you don't leave it behind. But this eight inch screen is super cool. Very responsive. I like this a lot. I just got done updating it, plugged it into the truck. We're gonna go over this scan tool inside my 23 Silverado 1500. But first let's go over here, cables galore. I mean, you've got power cables, you've got different adapter cables, different adapters, you've got more adapter cables, more adapters. This is super neat, nice case right here. This is gonna keep this safe inside the toolbox. This is a nice like shop use tool right here. This will graph, it will pull up data. We're gonna go into that. I'm gonna hook it up into my truck and we're gonna take a closer look at this. But you can see all the manufacturers on there. Again, I did update. I updated everything on there. But let's just go into the Chevrolet. Kind of gives you a rundown of what you can do with Chevrolet specific vehicles right here. You can see the different uh, special functions that it can do. Not for all of them, but this is just in general what it can do for Chevrolet vehicles. Just it, There's a ton. A ton there. We're going to hook this up to the truck. All right, check out this King Bull and K8 scan tool that we have here wireless DLC right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug this in. This is gonna be good for any shops that need a, a nice scan tool to read some data. And we're gonna be using this on my 23 Silverado with 3.0 Duramax diesel. And so we're gonna go straight into diagnostics. You know, let's go back. What is intelligent diagnosis? Or did it say diagnostics? I guess I didn't read it too well. See how long this takes right here. It's doing a lot of calculations. Excellent. All right, we got the VIN number. We got diagnosis and quick access. Let's go to diagnosis. All right, we're in. Health report, let's go and take a quick health report right here and see how long this takes. Two codes in the ECM. We have one in the transfer case control module. It's firing right through that list of all of the modules. All right, so we're about 25 seconds in now and we're at 45%. Okay, so this should complete in less than a minute. All right, so we've got a list of codes here. We've got a couple U codes. These kind of show up but we're not getting any check engine lights on the dash. So I think these are gonna be just ignored. And these P0402 and P140C, I've had these a few times. The one, the 402 has shown up on the dash, but then there was a reprogram for the 23 trucks. And since then I haven't had it trigger a check engine light. So both these codes are storing in the background, but they're not setting enough of a fault to render it to set a check engine light. So these are ignorable at this time. We've done the health report. Let's do system selection right here. We're gonna go into the ECM. Let's see what data we can go. We do mod module information and what this is gonna do is show the calibration IDs and everything. This is more for warranty related purposes and it's gonna allow you to uh, verify that the vehicle has not been programmed or anything. So those will change if you program the vehicle. Clear fault code self-explanatory read freeze frame. So if a code sets, there's gonna be freeze frame data in there. I don't think we're gonna have anything in here because it hasn't set a full hard code. So let's see if there's anything stored. All right, nothing stored there. So there's nothing we can go back on, which is what I'm saying is that it's only like partially set a code. It may need to set it two or three times within a certain cycle to really trigger a hard code. So we have nothing in there. Let's roll straight to special functions. Injector flow rate programming. You're gonna do this if you replace the fuel injector. There's a code on top of that injector and you're gonna need to put it in right here. We're not gonna be able to do it because the engine is running right now, but that's gonna allow the system to know how the fuel injector flows now because every fuel injector flows differently and they're all tested at the factory. So let's go into learn functions. We can see the basics right here. And uh, most of these people will probably never really need um, unless they're in a full-on shop, like an engine control valve, if you replace that, that's a big job. You're going to need to do a learn so that way it knows its positions on there. Reset. 
This is a lot of stuff in here. I'm very surprised at all of the options that are available. Air cleaner monitor setup. Now this is gonna be for the guy that installed an air intake and forgot to reset the or disable the air cleaner monitor system and then it locked him out so you can enable and re-enable right there. Mine's currently disabled because we do have an air intake on there. We're not gonna touch that. Uh, engine oil life reset. This is nice if you're having trouble resetting through the dash or if you want a specific percentage on there, like uh, if you did the oil change a thousand miles ago but you forgot to reset it, you can go in there and set that to 80% or whatever you feel like. Reductant fluid tank. All this stuff is gonna be if you replaced these parts, you're gonna need to do a reset. That's the way that a lot of these systems are nowadays is if you replace something, it needs to be reset. Uh, fuel filter life reset, that's self-explanatory. Knock sensor, uh, you've got multiple and you're gonna need to reset those. That way you're getting the correct reading from those. That's all excellent information right there. All right, inspection I am, we don't need that. Read fault code, we already did that, but let's see how long this takes to read a fault code. DGC display. All right, I pulled it up right away super cool I like that um, diagnostic test status we won't worry about any of that now let's go into read data stream I wonder how quick this is right here let's just go into what should we take a look at There's a lot of information here that we can look at what's engine mechanical data let's see what oil pressure is at idle because I hate the way that these look at idle that on the dash it just shows real low so we're gonna select all all right so we are in the data it's currently flowing because the engine is running crankcase ventilation hose connection pressure sensor that's cool I want to see what that looks like let's hit the graph button right there and graph this bad boy out I just revved it we got just a little bit of vacuum in there. That's cool. All right, let's go find that oil pressure. No inject or no cylinder misfires. Superb. Negative 40 on that because it doesn't have one. Desired engine oil pressure right there. Engine oil level sensor is okay. Engine oil pressure is right there. Now we can change how we want it to read. Do we want to read it in bar? Or do we want PSI? I like PSI just because I'm old school like that. So let's click the graph. All right, so we're sitting around 20s right there. Give it a rev. All right, we went near 60 with that rev. That's pretty awesome. Let's go ahead and add something to this. What I want to see is the desired. Let's compare the desired. There it is. All right, so engine oil pressure is the orange. Desired is the blue. So I'm going to rev. Holding RPMs there. So that's excellent. So now we can compare desired versus actual. And that's going to help us with diagnosis on there if we were to have an issue. That is super cool. That would be good for fuel pressure related issues. In fact, let's go ahead and go do that. So let's go to fuel system data, high pressure. We're gonna select all. Now what we want is uh, desired fuel pressure. So we want the rail pressure. That desired fuel pressure, that's from the tank. So right here we have desired fuel rail, rail pressure. Let's see what uh, other things we've got here. Engine timing is synchronized. Well, that's fantastic. All right, rail pressure sensor. Let's go ahead and graph this. Desired rail pressure sensor added there. All right, let's take a look. All right, so it's asking for 5801. It's getting 5801. I just revved it. 
Oh, that is dead on. All right. So that's pretty cool. So our fuel rail pressure is just absolutely dead on. That's excellent. Let's check out some more stuff in this. What else can we see going back? I like how responsive this is. Right when I touch it, it's definitely just opens right up. I want to see particulate filter data. So what I'm looking for in this is the truck has 19,882 miles. And what I want to know is, does this show how many total regens I've completed? So look, average distance between particulate regens, 241 miles. Now I believe that's gonna be a calculation if you shut off in the middle of a regen, then restart, that's gonna count as two. So this number is not accurate, it's not going to be accurate. The number that will be accurate if it shows us what it is, is the total number of completed regions. That's what we need to find. Right there, number of completed particulate filter regens, 48 counts, and we're at 19,882. So we're just under 500 miles per regen right there. And uh, that's, that's kind of cool. So I like that I can tell how many regens I've had on there. So with a scan tool like this, I can document that. All right, so first 20,000 miles, we got 48 regens in there. And then if, once I get to 40,000 miles, go in there and look to see if the numbers are changing. We can kind of assess the condition of the particulate filter in a way. It's not completely accurate on that thinking, but this scan tool is super cool. I love the way that you can just push something and it actually opens up right away. The response is super fast. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at actuation test now. So we can turn on the cooling fans, auxiliary cooling pump, um, charge air cooler pump right there. So if you've got air in the system and you need to flush it out and you've topped off the fluid, uh, you can go and command that on. That's super cool. I like that. Engine speed, we can get to ramp up the engine speed here at idle for whatever test that we're doing. And I this is for shop use. I highly suggested shop use for this. Glow plugs, I'm assuming you can go ahead and command them on to verify that they're functioning. But let's go ahead and take a look inside there. It is running, so I really can't do anything, so we're not gonna do. Condition not satisfied because we didn't do anything. Uh, mass airflow sensor, turbo. So this is, you're gonna just do, you do your basic relearn on this, I'm assuming. All right, so we can increase, wow. What else can we do? Increase and decrease the boost control position. Oh, that's kind of neat. I like that. So we test that system out. And that's what we got. This is uh, super neat. I love the responsiveness of this. There's so much in here. I mean, what can we do in the body control module? Let's do actuation test. Let's see here. Mirror folding wipers. Oh, I like this. Exterior lighting. Oh, that is excellent because then you can go ahead and check your lights just off of this. So you don't need a second person to watch for them. That's pretty cool. All right, power mode. Let's see what power mode. Transport mode. Oh, transportation mode. I like that. Wipers. What do you think? Should we hit the wipers and see what it does? Windshield washer pump. Oh. Let's command it. Oh, it's sprayed. That's pretty good. All right, so we verified that our washer pump works. Let's go ahead and wipe that off now. I like that, that's cool. Uh, mirror folding, let's go ahead and play with that. Let's fold. Did not fold for me in that case. Is it fold again? Negative. Let's release the control there. All right, so it didn't work for BCM mirror folding, and I do have that feature in the truck. Um, let's get out of there. <clears throat> let's go into the transfer or the transmission. So it's not showing my 10 speed transmission in there. So there's really nothing we can do 
transmission related on this right now. So that's probably gonna need an update. And then we can go into there. Let's see, transfer case control module. I did have the U codes in there, remember? So let's see, actuation test, transfer case control. We're not gonna play with that, but that's nice to see. Special functions, range actuator learn. If we replace the range actuator, that's excellent to have. And uh, correlation learn. Excellent. That's all good stuff in there for sure. Lighting control module. Let's go and take a look at that. What can we do with the lighting control module? Oh, trailer lighting. Oh, that's a fantastic test right there. I don't have a trailer hooked up, so we're not even going to mess with that. But you could see all the stuff that we could do with this. It's all responsive. That's super cool. Definitely liking my King Bowl and K8 right here. I think this is going to come in very handy at work and uh, and home as well. And it reminds me to do not forget to remove the VCI from the vehicle. And that is this guy right here. I like that. This thing is awesome. I can't wait to use it more.